Hey guys, on today's video, we're gonna talk about what to do when timeout is not working. Stay tuned. All right, you guys, we are talking about timeouts, what to do when they're not working. Um, I'm not necessarily against timeouts, but I'm not necessarily for timeouts either. I think that it's a um, pretty delicate balance um, between between doing them and not doing them and the reason behind why they're being done in the first place. But with timeouts not working, I typically see two reasons that they're not happening. And the first complaint is typically my child doesn't sit still. My child doesn't stay in timeout. They get up and leave. They don't stay. They kind of walk away, whatever, um, wherever your timeout space is, they're not really staying in it. And so my first go-to or tip or trick is how old is the child in timeout? Most children um, don't really sit still in timeout, especially young children. I don't do timeouts until two and then I only do one minute per age. So a two-year-old would have a two-minute timeout and a four-year-old would have a four-minute timeout. Like, you understand that? And so when I'm hearing that children aren't staying in timeout, I can typically gauge pretty quickly how old are they and how long is their timeout. Those are two big key factors that are really gonna help figuring out why they're not getting up. Um, so to combat that, I set a timer and I sit them down and I'm like, you know what? You have to sit, I'm gonna set a timer. When that timer dings, timeout's over. Um, I am very matter of fact about it, very casual about it. I don't really make a big deal about it one way or the other, it's just kind of, this happened, you're going to sit down, here's the timer, there you go. Um, the second reason that I hear, or the second complaint I hear with timeouts is my child doesn't really seem to care that they were in timeout. Maybe they act oblivious to whatever just happened to cause them being in timeout. Maybe when they're done being in timeout, they don't really want to talk about it or they act like they don't know why they were in timeout. They act like they don't care. They act like... Um, it's your fault. I've had kids who try to spin the whole situation that it's my fault that they were in timeout, not not their fault. Um, so when that's happening, I look for two factors. Was it clearly defined why they're going to timeout? And was timeout an appropriate action? Um, sometimes we do timeouts to just kind of separate a situation. Say maybe we have two kids fighting back and forth with each other and we just need to cool it down and figure out what happened. So sometimes one of the easier things to do is just say time out both of you and then kind of go from there. So, you know, everybody gets a cool down time, whatever. Well, when that happens, your child doesn't really understand why they were put in timeout, you don't really even know what went down. And so it's really difficult to figure out what's going on. And it's difficult for your, for your child to sit somewhere when they don't understand why they're sitting and why you haven't listened to their side of the story. So when I'm noticing that that trend is happening, that the child doesn't care that they're in timeout, I try to be very specific with why they're in timeout. So you're in timeout because you were hitting. You're in timeout because you took this toy away. Or even you're in timeout because we need to cool down. We need to just take a break. And that's actually the language that I use a lot for timeouts is we need to take a break and think about whatever. Um, you were hitting, we need to take a break and think about it. Um, that tends to, in my experience, help children just kind of relax. It doesn't necessarily feel as um, 
punishment-y, which I know some people are going to have arguments against and, you know, that's your prerogative. But um, in my experience, making it seem like it's just a time to reflect and just think and we're just going to time out and break, um, they tend to be more receptive to sitting still and to listening to what I have to say and as well as share their experience with me like I hit because blah 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 and they're more conversational because it doesn't feel so much of a them versus me it becomes a bridge almost that now they have a safe place to talk Okay guys, so um, that's our video. Leave us a comment, tell me what you think, tell me what you thought was helpful, what was not helpful. Um, let me know if you guys do time out, don't do time out, um, and what works for you guys. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.